Hi guys, welcome back to the 2021 listing challenge where I list 20 items every day for 21 days and we have reached day nine. As per usual, I have a haul for you guys to show what 20 items I am listing today. And this haul is actually a Goodwill Bins haul back from like probably a seven months ago at this point. And then I will go over any sales that I had from Tuesday, which spoiler alert was only one sale. <laughs> and lastly, a lot of you have been asking how free shipping has been going, how it's been affecting my sales. Uh, since I've been offering free shipping on Poshmark for the duration of this challenge and I actually started it back on April 21st and I ended it today <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you guys how it went. I'm really loving this challenge because it's keeping me super accountable to listing every day and I haven't had that in a really really long time so thank you guys so much for helping me be accountable. I know that you've mentioned that I'm helping you stay accountable so mutual we're helping each other and I love that we're starting with the Goodwill bins items it's a mix there's Goodwill bins items and then there's some just from normal Goodwill dollar day I think so this is a max studio uh, it is just a red floral medallion print maxi dress and max studio always has these super stretchy dresses I find max studio all the time at TJ Maxx for super cheap <laughs> so it doesn't always go for the best prices but this style of dress a maxi dress like this with a cool print uh, tends to do decently enough that it's worth picking up for a dollar so hoping to get about 20 for that and you'll see my pricing over here change because I'm no longer pricing up ten dollars to cover shipping costs so my uh, buffer that you see for the price over here is going to be a lot less than it was previously whenever I quoted you guys a price. Next we have a Banana Republic slow and fit pair of dress pants and these actually came off of a Facebook thrift quarantine sourcing group. A while ago I got a lot off of there of a bunch of items. People are always posting just like all of this inventory that they don't want to list for whatever reason they say that they source too much or what whatever they they have a lot of inventory they want to get rid of it people can come in and purchase things from them super cheap they only allow pricing between one and fifteen dollars per item on there so i decided to give it a shot and most of the items did not resell <laughs> very well i'm still sitting on a lot of the items that i picked up so a little bit of a fail on my part but this was actually free because it didn't have a size tag and the person just said if you buy something else from me I'll throw it in for free and I like the style it is a slow and high rise uh, style dress pants with a tuxedo stripe on the side of the leg oh and zipper detail at the ankle there so I decided to give them a shot and I took measurements since it's a high rise Usually the waist measurement here is going to be whatever the waist measurement would be number wise for that size. So since the waist across was 14, multiply that by two, they're like a size 28, which also translates to a size six. I feel very confident listing these as a size six, especially because I looked up other pants in this exact same style and found the same measurements in a size six as the pants I'm currently holding. This is a Sangria. Uh, you may have seen Signature by Sangria written there instead. I guess sometimes they just put Sangria, but it's just a floral. Um, the material is kind of thick uh, and it's just a sheath dress. It will go for only like 15 to 18 dollars this brand is not very expensive but if i really like the style of the dress and i think it will sell i will pick it up for a dollar just because they're pretty nice dresses and i've sold this brand before so i know it sells it just doesn't go for a ton this is a pair of hollister high-rise jean legging 
advanced stretch in a size 5 regular. They are the Stark Wash Skinny Leg. This is one of the only styles by Hollister that I will actually pick up to resell. And of course I only pick it up if it is a dollar because it doesn't go for that much. Again, hoping for just around $20 for these. That's my bread and butter guys. If I go to Goodwill Dollar Day and I can find an item that I know will flip between $15 and $25, I will pick it up. Especially if I've had luck selling it before, in which case I have sold a couple of pairs of Hollister High Rise jeggings, so I feel confident in that buy. This is a Vince Camuto size small pink black um, printed blouse. This was a consignment item, so uh, I didn't choose this to resell and I, if I was at the thrift store I would have left this behind even if it was a dollar because Vince Camuto does not resell for very much. I'm only hoping for like 10 to 12 dollars on this if it will even go for that much. I don't even look at the top section most of the time whenever I go to a thrift store. I will stick to the more substantial areas like the jeans, the dresses, coats, right now shorts because we're getting into the season where shorts are going to sell in swimsuits uh, i stick to areas where i feel i can find more items that are going to sell for at least 15 dollars or more and tops is usually not that area for me so just gonna save myself some time and not even look through it because there's a million tops at every thrift store eva mendez by new york and company black tropical dress is very just loose uh, tent style with the um, chiffon over a lining and I figured this would do well for spring and summer. I purchased this forever ago at the bins so it didn't cost too much. I debated whether I wanted to pick it up or not because I wasn't sure about this brand. New York and Company usually doesn't resell well, but the Eva Mendez line does okay. And this style is just so cool. I decided to get it and I think it'll sell for around $20 to even $25. This was another bins pickup. It is a Francesca's size large and I just got it because it was pretty. And it was from the bin, so it didn't cost much at all. Maybe anywhere from like 50 cents to 88 cents. I'm hoping that it will be a fairly fast sell, but I was thinking it would be a fast sell months ago whenever I was thinking to sell it for like the holiday season, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe it'll still resell pretty quickly. It's cool because it has velvet floral pattern going on all over the chiffon and all over the back. And the cold shoulder sleeves, or little flutter sleeves are pretty cute. I don't know, it's a size large, so I decided to get it. But 10 to 15 maybe. This is an interesting one. I can't show you the tag because it's tucked inside the the pocket. Um, and it, I had the hardest time finding the tag. But if ever you can't find the tag for something, check inside the pockets. Because sometimes for vests, that's where it's hiding. Especially if it's a reversible vest, which this is. And I can tell it's a reversible vest because the zipper can go all the way around to the back. So if the zipper goes around to the other side, it's probably a reversible item. If you can't find the tag and then you find the tag in the pocket, it's a reversible item. Several indicators if you're not sure. And this is a mink, faux mink, um, vest. Once again, this would have done better if I had listed it back months ago whenever it was the correct season for it, but we're getting to it now and it'll sell eventually for like 20 bucks. <laughs> this is pretty cute. It is an H&M leopard print sleeveless fit and flare dress. Very uh, thicker material, pleated skirt, no pockets, but this was just too nice to leave behind. I thought it was so cute. Like, you can't beat this print. And I love this style of dress, but they are kind of hard to move because uh, people were not partying all that much over the last, you know, year and a half. So 
<sighs> Hopefully it sells fairly quickly now. Hoping for 20 to $25 on that. This was another item that I just picked up because it was just too dang cute. Lula Row, size extra, extra small. New with tags. And it is a floral body con dress, but I've never seen a dress from Lula Row with this interesting texture because it's it's not any material I've ever seen from them. It's kind of like, it's like fake woven material. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it, but it feels really cool. And I think that this pattern and the color scheme might uh, sell well if I advertise it as like cottage core. This is called a, a Julia style dress. It says right there on the tag, even though I'm pretty sure I had looked up the style before looking at the tag because I'm dumb like that. <laughs> like, oh, what is it? What style is this? I need to research it, not just look at the tag. I'm gonna try to get $15 out of it. All right, now that we got those items that I put to the side for eternity out of the way, we got a Brooks Brothers 365, size 12, and this is a really long wool cashmere blend coat. Uh, I cannot show this to you guys very well, I'm sorry. Hopefully you get a better look at it in the um, listing photo. But it's cool, it has buttons, silver buttons down the front. Uh, it's in really good shape. It needs to be lint rolled because it's been floating around forever. But otherwise I don't see anything wrong with it. And I picked this out of the bins. So I looked it over pretty good before getting it because I didn't want to get it if it needed dry cleaned. So we're going to try to get about $55 out of this coat. They do not sell well. <laughs> it's going to take some time for the right buyer to find that coat and purchase it but I think it will do better on eBay than it might do on Poshmark. All right now we are into regular thrift store finds, Goodwill Dollar Day finds. This is an American Eagle um, stretch shorts in a size 4. They're just a pair of distressed black frayed hem shorts and I did pay full price for these at $5.29. The only reason I did is because they're going to sell really quickly right now. And if I can make a super fast flip, I don't mind the lower profit margins because that's one more cup of Starbucks I can drink <laughs> for a really small amount of work because shorts take no time at all to list. They are super easy to photograph. I've listed a million of these type of shorts, so I just copy and paste my title and description from a prior listing. Vendu is really nice for doing stuff like that because I can just have two tabs of Vendu open up next to each other and then I can just go back and forth, you know, search for American Eagle distressed shorts in the one tab, pull up a prior listing that I had, uh, copy all the stuff into a new listing, or just copy the listing in general. Okay, I'm not sure how these are going to do. They are a Sperry slip-on mule canvas shoe. Uh, I've just never seen anything like this from Sperry, personally. I always just see their boat shoes with the, you know, typical lace up here. Um, so I just wanted to give them a shot because they only cost a dollar. And I thought they were kind of cool. I don't know. They are also my size, so maybe I'll just slip them on sometimes <laughs> whenever I need shoes really fast. And if they're comfortable, maybe I'll just keep them for myself. But uh, I did see one sold for $7. And then I saw another one that sold for $21. So I don't know what we're going to get for them. I'm going to just try to get like 17 But I don't. I think these are going to be a hard sell. This is a Livy, which if you don't know, is a uh, Lane Bryant activewear brand. And it is a size 26, 28. So plus size, just black cotton, I think. Stretchy leggings. Yep. Yep. So simple, but I looked it over for flaws and it seemed to be in pretty good shape. There's just the smallest amount of fabric pilling right here, but really nothing major. 
nothing like I usually see on pants like this. And they only cost a dollar, so I got them because I knew that they would be a pretty easy sell just because of the size and the fact that they're solid black leggings. People always need solid black leggings. I was way more excited to find this than I should have been. <laughs> this is an Eddie Bauer size eight and it's a pair of cargo pants. There's many pockets, snap closure, and this is in great condition, this pair of pants, but I don't know what these are called. I don't know if they're like, I mean, I should have probably searched hiking pants. That would probably be a good one to look for. Um, this material feels like it would be weatherproof, like waterproof maybe. Uh, I'm gonna look up the style name later and see what else I can find out about it. But they're really cool because they're fleece lined and also just because they're in such great condition. They only cost a dollar. And whenever I searched Eddie Bauer cargo pants, I was getting comps around $25. So these might even be able to go for more than that, but that's what I'm shooting for at the moment. Hiking pants, um, especially if they're convertible where you can cut off, cut off, like zip off the bottom ends of the pants. Those sell really well in a lot of brands. So definitely keep an eye out for those. They'll look something like these, except that they'll have a zipper around the knee and they can be converted into shorts. This is a loft maternity size four. And it's just a solid black uh, pair of dress pants, trousers, kind of a tapered leg. Uh, I figured, you know, these are in good shape. Uh, people that are pregnant still go to work sometimes and might need a pair of pants dress pants. So I decided to give them a shot and I think they'll sell for about $20. Next up we have a kind of mistake buy because I shouldn't have picked these up with the amount of flaws that they have but it is a Aerie by American Eagle pair of black leggings and these are their chill play move leggings. I love picking these up even for full price which is $5.29 just because they sell really quickly for around 17 to 20 some dollars. The problem with these is that they have quite a bit of wear at the back seam here. If you can see, I didn't notice that in the store before picking them up. And also you can see there's some material wear on the butt. It's not major. It's not, I don't even know if I would consider it pilling. It's just this person has sat on their butt a lot <laughs> and it doesn't the material doesn't feel as smooth as it does on the front it feels like there's a little bit of wear there so that's unfortunate still going to try to shoot for around 17 to 19 dollars but probably realistically i'm going to get less for them than that so maybe 13. this is a very exciting one guys if you don't know about sweaters like this i'm about to drop some knowledge <laughs> knowledge just kidding so this is a blarney i've never heard of this brand blarney woolen mills every time i looked at that i thought it said barney's and i'm like oh barney's is like an expensive department store or something right but it says blarney and it probably says blarney because it, it kind of sounds irish right so maybe it's some sort of irish brand because what this is is an irish aran knit sweater uh, a ran knit or otherwise known as fisherman's knit is where you have this specific type of pattern going down the front there it's um, I could also advertise this as cable knit but this specific type of knit is more expensive um, and it usually comes in a wool material. This one in particular is a 70% acrylic, 30% wool blend in a size large, but it is in really, really great condition. And comps were anywhere from 30 to $80. So I'm shooting for somewhere kind of in the middle there and going to try to get around 50 for this. But definitely keep your eyes out for Aran knits, even if you don't recognize the brand name. 
they sell really really well especially in the winter time so i did pay full price for that sweater at five dollars and 29 cents this is a lane bryant size 22 the bryant blazer and it's just a floral blazer it was in excellent condition so i decided to get it especially considering the size I really don't mind selling Lane Bryant. It usually sells pretty quickly for me. Um, and I just figured this was a nice blazer. I liked it. I didn't look up comps or anything. I often don't look up comps whenever I'm shopping, unless I'm really unsure about something. And then I'll look it up. But uh, for the most part, plus size items in great condition. If they only cost a dollar, I pick them up. And this was one such item, but it was selling for around $18, so shooting for somewhere around there as well. Here's the last item, guys. This is an H&M size 12. I thought this was just the cutest laser jacket, coat, whatever it is, double-breasted, because it has this really nice plaid pattern with black and white and kind of mustard yellow gold colored thread i just really like the look of it thought the size was great at a size 12. it has this texture all over it with these little puffy dots that is not a flaw because it's literally all over it is definitely intentional and unfortunately the comps that i saw for similar items were not very high i didn't find this exact item so i'm not sure how this is going to do but just hoping for like 25 20 25 dollars on this i was hoping it would be even more than that but i only paid a dollar for it so i don't mind okay let's talk about my sales from tuesday we only had one sale guys unfortunately tuesday wednesday and thursday were all pretty crappy sales days uh so i'm only going to have a few sales to share with you each of those days for this day the only thing i sold <laughs> was a pair of Steve Madden wedge booties in a size eight and a half. They sold on Mercari for $13. That was an offer that I accepted. And after fees, I made $10 and two cents. It took 267 days to sell and they only cost me a dollar, but I picked them up because of style and I should have just left them behind because they had cracking going on on the inside lining of one of the shoes and I should have just left them behind because no one wants that so these were a really hard sell but they did eventually sell to somebody and the funny thing about this sale is that after I shipped them the lady that bought them reached out to me and said hey I want to cancel this order I found something else I want instead and I was like well I've already shipped it and she's like it's okay I'll work with Bercari about it and I was like I don't know what you're expecting Mercari to do necessarily because like I already shipped the items so they're, they can't have it shipped back to me necessarily. It's just like it's on the way to you so I don't know. I don't know what's actually going to happen there. So since we don't have a lot of sales to talk about, might as well talk about that free shipping uh, on Poshmark. So the reason I did it initially was because I thought it was really cool that Poshmark has this new feature that you can go in and add a shipping discount directly to the listing. And initially I was adding a $4.99 shipping discount to a lot of my items because whenever I go to send out offers, it's normally what I'm sending. I'm sending like a 10% off offer with $4.99 shipping. So I figured if it's already in the listing, maybe some people will outright buy the items. And then I was thinking, well, what if I just made my whole closet free shipping? How much of an incentive would that be for people to purchase from me? How many full price sales would I get because people see free shipping and then they just want to buy from me? Or they're shopping on Poshmark and they're seeing all these listings and none of them have free shipping and then mine pops up and it has free shipping. Would that be an incentive to buy? So like I'm thinking about all the reasons why free shipping on Poshmark might be a good thing. Well, I went through and manually changed all of my listings to free shipping which takes many hours and so i i kind of felt stuck with it at that point because i put in all this time so i'm like i'm gonna test it out for a while <laughs> like let's do at least a month right i ended up doing two weeks and two days i had to end it because 
I just felt like the amount of activity in my closet had decreased so much and the fact that I had like a couple no sales days on Posh really freaked me out because that almost never happens with the amount of items that I have available in my Poshmark closet that like never happens. So the fact that that was happening along with the fact I was offering free shipping and not seeing a lot of activity I think associated with offering free shipping, uh, I decided to change all of my listings back to buyer pays shipping. Now I didn't want to just go off of feeling, right? So I actually looked at the data and for the time period, which was April 21st through May 7th, that I actually had free shipping on all my listings, I made 30 sales on Poshmark. And then if we look two weeks and two days earlier than that, whenever my closet was just its normal self, I had made 36 sales on Poshmark. So yes, my sales have decreased and they really, really shouldn't be decreasing because I have been listing way, way more than I did for that prior two week period. Like this two week period, I've listed significantly more than I listed during the April 4th through April 20th period. So there is no reason the sales should be lower for the free shipping period, other than the fact that free shipping is messing with my sales. And I'll tell you guys why I think that it messed with my sales. I think it has to do with the fact that I have a lot of lower priced items in my closet. Like I just showed you guys, a lot of these items I'm going to be listing for around that $25 mark. So whenever you're offering free shipping and you're trying to make like a $20 sale on an item, you have to price your item up by so much in order for it to cover the, the shipping cost and then the additional fees because you're paying a 20% a on this higher amount than you would be if you didn't have the free shipping on. I'll pop up a little thing here that shows how I get to the same amount of earnings with free shipping and without free shipping and what the listing has to actually be at in order to do that. So it's just I have to list things for so much higher than I actually want them to sell for whenever I'm offering free shipping. And for a low cost fast flip closet, <laughs> that's not the move. I think if my closet was a lot of higher end brands, it wouldn't be a problem. Free shipping would work in a closet like that because most of the sales that I did have with free shipping were higher price sales. It seemed like most of the likes that I was getting throughout this period were on items that were higher priced items where the free shipping markup didn't affect the searchability as much, didn't affect the buyer's perception of the price as much. So that's my thought process behind it all. I just don't think free shipping was the right move for my type of closet. If you have a different type of closet where you're selling a lot of nicer, higher end stuff for more money, free shipping could definitely work for you. Or you could do some sort of hybrid where items under $50 do not have free shipping on them. And then items over $50 do have free shipping on them. There's lots that you can play around with here. But for now, I just feel comfortable keeping it my normal buyer pays shipping method and then I send out shipping discounts. Oh, that's another thing <laughs> that was a problem with offering free shipping is that whenever the closet clear out days would come along, which I normally make a few sales on closet clear out days because I'm reaching out to everybody saying, hey, would you like a discount and get $4.99 shipping? That doesn't apply whenever your entire closet is free shipping. Like, no, they're not gonna want a $4.99 shipping whenever you're offering free shipping. So closet clearouts were just unavailable as a uh, marketing tool for me. And then add a slap on that, the problems that I've been having with offering shipping discounts on listings themselves, which I went over a few videos ago, and it was just too much. I needed to switch back to the way that I know works for me. There you go, now you know. <laughs> uh, if you have a similar closet to mine, just don't even try it. <laughs> I really don't think it's worth it, at least not yet. Maybe once Poshmark gets all their, their stuff figured out, or maybe they'll do closet clear out a little bit differently at some point where it'll make more sense for closets to have full free shipping. But for now, 
buyer pay shipping is the way to go. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a like down below. It really helps my channel and helps this video get out to more people. And if you haven't already and you would like to, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know next time I put out a new video, which right now is every single day as I complete this challenge. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Bye.